You have to believe in your heart, even if it's scary and even if you don't know that you will not fail. Even if things look like they are going so south that they could never turn, you just have to never stop believing. Hey, my name is Jenna Kutcher, and I am obsessed with all things business, marketing, numbers, and helping you to navigate both the messy and the magical seasons of this thing called life. I'm a small town mama who took a $300 camera, grew a successful photo biz, and now I work from home and run a seven figure online business. I teach you the tried and true secrets to building a career you adore. Shy away from the real talk? <laughs> no way. Money, hardship, growth, loss, and marketing are all topics we discuss here. Think of this as your one stop shop for happy hour with a gal pal mixed with business school. Pull up a seat, make sure you're cozy, and get ready to be challenged and encouraged while you learn. This is the Gold Digger Podcast. She shared the same air with Beyonce, but honestly, that's not even the most interesting thing about Mally Roncal. Her career began in fashion and pivoted into makeup, getting celebrities red carpet ready with more than just cosmetics. Mally is known and beloved for her energy and spark, exactly what her clients needed for an early hair and makeup call. Now she's turned beauty into her empire as the founder and president of Mally Beauty. I cannot wait to hear all about that experience and how she's turned her brand into an industry giant with staying power. In this conversation, Mally shares her story, the behind the scenes of growing and starting a beauty brand, all of the ways she encourages beauty both inside and out, as well as what she wants the next generation of business owners and leaders to learn from her journey. Here she is, meet Mally. Do you need a new show to add to your rotation? Please do not miss No Straight Path hosted by Ashley Menzies Babatunde, brought to you by the HubSpot Podcast Network. Ashley is shedding light on the stories behind the shiny resumes, social media highlights, and job titles, humanizing success from the millennial perspective. Featuring guests from all walks of life, No Straight Path aims to inspire conversations around the nuanced perspective of success. Ashley recently dug into the topic of fulfillment with Sabrina Merchant. If you've ever wanted to make a hard pivot and pursue something completely new and different in your life and career, you need to listen to that conversation. Listen to No Straight Path wherever you get your podcasts. Mally, our paths should have crossed a bajillion times. In fact, I think they like virtually had, like we've virtually given high fives countless yes. times. However, <laughs> this is like the real deal where we finally get to sit down and have a conversation. If only we could be in person, but I'm so excited. So first and foremost, welcome to the Gold Digger podcast. Thank you. Oh my gosh. I'm so excited and so honored. I've been listening to you and obviously watching you. And yes, we have so many mutual friends. And I've just been looking at this gorgeous, beautiful, blonde creature from afar. And I was like, when do I get my hands on Jenna? I'm going to here we are. And here we are. Thank you so much for having me. Absolutely. Okay. So I've gotten to witness Mally today. Like I've gotten to see who you are and kind of what you've built, but I am dying to know a bit more about your origin story and kind of how your path led you to the world of A-list makeup and beauty. Like give me (laughs) the past because it's been a long journey for you. Yes. Yes. Annie, I just turned 50 in January, which is just like crazy, right? Like all of a sudden... Yeah, it's like, I don't know what it was supposed to feel like, but I don't think it was supposed to feel like this. Anyway, long story short, I was actually pre-med in college. I wanted to be a doctor because both of my parents are Filipino immigrants that, you know, that are both doctors. And I was like, I always looked at them like they were my idols. So I was like, okay, well, that's what they are. That's what I'm going to be. Fade out, fade in, pre-med in college. Eh, didn't happen. I was like, this is really not for me. Like, where's the where's the the clothes and the styling and the lip gloss and all that business? And I kind of stepped out of myself and I was like, what do I see myself doing? Remember, this was 150 years ago. I wanted to be a makeup artist. And, you know, makeup artistry now is definitely not what it was back then you know, 20 plus years ago, like now with Instagram and TikTok and all that, there's like makeup everywhere. But I didn't really have anyone's path to look at aside from like, say, like a Bobby Brown or a Kevin O'Quan or, you know, those kinds of things. 
but there was certainly nobody who was communicating as a makeup artist. I don't even know if I'm answering your question now that I'm like talking about it. It's just like diary of the mouth as usual. Um, <laughs> but basically how I became a makeup artist was really just by hoofing it. I was living in New York. I started as a fashion designer, you know, believe it or not, that was kind of like my foot in the door. But I really was just like a little hustling Filipino girl, like on the streets, building a book. I ended up meeting an agent and he was like, listen, you got nothing I can work with here, but I do know that you have a passion that I've never seen before. Mm. You will work your butt off. And I know that and I feel it. So let's make it happen. And I started just doing little jobs. I ended up, you know, working with celebrities. It was one of those weird things that my agent had the insight and he said, you know what? You're like a cup of coffee in the morning. You're like a lover. You're a nurturer. And I feel like celebrities need that. If they're going to go out there and sing in front of, you know, like 20,000 people, they need somebody like you sitting behind the chair and saying, you can do this and also make them gorgeous. I became, by the grace of God, a very busy celebrity makeup artist living on the road for years. And all of a sudden, realizing that something was missing, I wanted to make makeup for people so that they could look and feel just as powerful as Beyonce standing in Madison Square Garden. Mm -hmm. And I started Mally Beauty. It was also very important to me that I launched it on QVC, which again, at the time was the original Instagram. You know, mm -hmm. there was no television. I mean, there was no, you know, uh, TikTok to teach people tips and tricks and also present and sell. So I went to QVC and at the time that was a very, it was a very sort of taboo thing. Well, not taboo, but it, there were not a lot of people doing it. Yeah. So again, I don't know if I answered your question, but that was 17 years ago and I'm still here jumping up and down, being crazy and telling everyone, you know, how to put on their eyeliner and, and how to make them look like they've had eight hours of sleep if they've been up all night <laughs> breastfeeding uh, their brand new baby. Oh, that's uh, me. You're speaking to me. Oh my gosh. Mally, one thing that I think is so interesting and I love about your journey too, and I think about it often. I, I recently had my makeup done for a photo shoot and mm -hmm. it is a very intimate position to be in for both people in that role, the person doing the makeup and the person receiving it. And, you know, we often joke that it's like they become therapists and they're, you know, the pre jitters, they're right there experiencing it and yeah. they're making sure that somebody feels confident and ready to do what they're about to do. And when you share about like working alongside celebrities, that sounds really intimidating. What about that experience would surprise people? Like what do people not expect yeah. when they think about it? <laughs> well, it is funny. Yes, I have to tell you, lucky for me, I have no issue with personal space. I will get very close to you. <laughs> I will hug you way longer than you feel comfortable with. And, you know, and for me, I just love humans and I love looking deep in people's eyes and I love really just connecting with them and seeing what makes them feel feel good, feel bad, you know. And I think the thing, you know, working with celebrities was was my gosh, it's, it's such an amazing gift because number one, you get a peek, yes, behind that curtain, right? Like you look at, you know, the likes of a Beyonce or a Jennifer Lopez or Celine Dion, all these people, and you're looking, they're like, oh my God, they're like superhuman and they have no insecurities and they don't get boogers and, you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. Well, it, the truth of the matter is, look, I ain't going to lie. Yeah, they are kind of superhuman in a way that their work ethic is wow. Okay. Every client and celebrity that I got lucky enough to be close with, I've never, I think they really inspired me when it came to work ethic and never giving up and never stopping. However, Jenna, they have the same insecurities, mm -hmm. the same worries, the same fears. A lot of my clients have since also become mothers and that pull of like, oh my gosh, I want to go out there and slay this game, but oh, I want to be home with my babies, you know, that kind of thing. It's, you know, at the end of the day, we are all connected in that way. We all feel similar things. And, you know, you'll do someone's makeup and they'll look and they'll look at, at me and they'll say, is it good? Do we feel good? Are we ready? Are we ready to do this? Like everyone needs that little 
hug, that little push, that little lift. And it doesn't matter if you are one of the biggest celebrities in the world or, you know, your best friend or your next door neighbor. We all need that hug and that nurturing and that loving. And that's something that I am so honored and proud to do, not only for my clients, but for, you know, my Mali Beauty clients. You know, this, mm-hmm. this is what I love more than anything. You know, I love that connection. Oh, I think it's so beautiful. And something that I'm so intrigued by, especially hearing kind of your journey of coming up in this industry is you were a service provider, which was, yes. you know, taking you all around the world. You were trading time for money, which mm-hmm. a lot of people, that's how we get our footing. That's how I started out as a photographer. Yes. When did you realize that you needed to make a switch? And did you realize that and intentionally kind of pursue Mali Beauty on a different level? Or was it kind of something that happened by chance? It's so funny because it's bizarre, Jenna. I remember the exact moment. Ooh, I, I, I know. <laughs> so, you know, and, and listen, I realize, guys, I, when I tell you these stories about like flying in the private jets and doing all this, it's like, you're like, okay, girl, I'm out here. Like, you know, I'm hitting the pavement doing my own yes. thing. But it really does connect, I believe, with every you know, hard worker out there who's really trying to create something for themselves. So long story short, I was on a marathon, Jenna, like I'll never forget. I had always had a little notebook of Mali Beauty and fun fact, it was, it was actually the beginning of Mali Beauty is actually called Mali Girl. I wanted it to be kind of like a teen line. Like I wanted to like talk to teenagers because I remember being a teenager myself and I've been a drag queen girl since I came out the womb. Honey, Mm -hmm. I love makeup and I always wanted to like, you know, dress up and whatever. Anyway, so I kept this notebook. I always had it with me on the plane. Phil and I, you know, we we talked about creating a makeup line. I remember it was in a Japanese restaurant in the West Village in New York City. And we were, we wrote it on a napkin. We had this whole idea. Anyway, and I had been on the road and I was in LA and I was in Paris. And then I had to fly to San Antonio. And I was like, and uh, honey, I was exhausted. And I was in LA with Mary J. Blige. And I was shooting an album cover with her. And I'll never forget, I was exhausted, Jenna. You know that exhausted, Mm -hmm. that one that like your body, your mind, like you don't even know who, you know, what day it is. And you just, you've given everything you can. And I remember I said, I need a moment to myself. And I stepped out into the parking lot and the sun was shining. And yes, to your point, if I wasn't standing where I was standing, I wasn't making money. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like I was, I had to be there. And I called Phil. And I said, I'm done. I said, I love this life. I love this job. I love everything that it's done. I'm always going to be a makeup artist. I said, but now is the time. That idea we had to start Mally Beauty, today's the day. And he said, okay. And believe it or not, that man quit his job that day and said, here we go. You and me, honey, we're going to make it happen. And it was just that aha moment that I needed to say to myself, okay, we're going to We're going to do something. We're still going to love. We're still going to lift people up. We're still going to teach tips and tricks, but we're going to do it and we're going to teach them how to fish. And I'm not going to have to stand here all the time to make money. Mm -hmm. You know, that was the thing. How can we make money while we sleep? That was the question. (laughs) So what was the answer to that? Walk me through (laughs) that because it obviously didn't just happen. But I think that is a beautiful, almost like a tipping point for a lot of entrepreneurs where you are so pumped to get paid to do what you're passionate about. But at some point you realize that the only way to get paid is by showing up, right? Mm -hmm. And sometimes Mm -hmm. life does not allow you to show up. And that's a real reality that makes a lot of entrepreneurs pause and say, whoa, 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 I've built something that like I have to keep pushing. And do I have the strength and the time and the energy to do that? So how did you pivot? And like, what did that look like? Well, it's funny. Hindsight is twenty twenty. Is that what they say? Yes. I, 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 I kind of traded one thing where I had to be standing there for another, which I didn't realize at the time. However, it was it was the right thing for me. Okay, so 
at the time I was also, I was the spokesperson for a very, very big, large beauty retailer. And I, you know, and I knew that I could just put my makeup in those stores and that it would be great. But there was something again, Jenna, that was pulling me in. And this is like listening to your whisper and, and saying, you know, this is the way that I'm supposed to take this path. And I don't know if anyone else, you know, a lot of other people have not done that path, but this is the path that's pulling me. And that was, again, going to QVC, which was my, again, the Instagram of the time, the social media of the time. And I said, I'm going to sell it on television because then I get to connect with my customer. That's, mm. this is the thing. I don't want someone as, as great as people who sell makeup in stores are. They're very knowledgeable. They're amazing. I respect them so much. That is a very, very important job. However, I wanted to be the one to share the message. I wanted to be the one to connect with this customer. I wanted to basically look them in the eye, if you will, and say, this is something that I created for you to help you look and feel like this. So I went to QVC. We, by the grace of God, you know, again, this is a very long story. We ended up launching 17 years ago, actually on March 5th, 2005, we had a one hour show and we sold out in 36 minutes, mm -hmm. literally every single piece of makeup gone, sweeping the warehouse floor. It was literally aside from meeting and marrying my husband and having our three kids, the best day of my life, hands down, mm -hmm. exhilarating. But then I realized just like that, that that was, that meant that I, again, had to be standing there to sell. Right. I had to yep. be standing there, yep. to play, which I was like, wait a minute. So it's funny, like people would say, oh, I turned on QVC at 2 a.m. and I saw the recording of you. And I was like, girl, that was no recording. I was standing there at 2 a.m., you know, and I did that for many years. Now, again, thank God, technology, the world is changing and really, you know, obviously pivoting in a way that we now can record, we can, you know, sell online. And I have to say QVC and even our, you know, our team has done such an incredible job with repurposing and, and using, you know, videos and stuff to really be able to sell 24 hours a day. Yeah. So it's, it's been amazing. So where do you go from here? Like what, <laughs> one thing that I think is so impressive about what you've built is that it has stood the test of times. It's, it's really grown with you. It's evolved with you, but at the core, it's always stayed true to your passion. And I think that in the world that we're in, so many entrepreneurs have found themselves in situations that you've already found yourself in and kind of navigated out of. But at the same point, too, you have this long life. Your brand has staying power. And I think a lot of entrepreneurs, when the world shifted, they were like, I've got to pivot. I've got to change. What would you say to somebody? Because I do think there is something unique here where it's like you have stayed at that heart of it mm -hmm. and you have continued to refine and evolve. But at the same point, too, you're like, let's keep doing what's working. Can you yes. talk about that a little bit? Absolutely. Yes. You know. After 17 years, I, you know, I'm not afraid to say Mally Beauty has been through many ups and downs and it has, you know, she, I actually call her she because she's my first daughter, right? Yep. She is my first birth. As you know, that's like, this is, this is what it's like having a baby, right? You know, she's been through a lot. And I think the thing is, yes, I never gave up on her and she never gave up on me. That yep. said, we are really one. So it's funny. Yes, with the pandemic, I'll tell you, I know it sounds weird. I know, my gosh, I'm so grateful that we made it through the other side and we continue to grow and change and, you know, get better. The thing I think that I realized was that the one meaningful difference that Mally Beauty has is for lack of a better term, we make we make amazing products. I'm very, very proud of the products that we make. It's all about brightening and making you look fresh and making you look amazing and making you like we call it bulletproof. So it ain't coming off till you decide to take it off. And it's all my celebrity tips and tricks cooked into these products. And da, 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 there's my selling point. Yeah. But Jenna, it really is just about 
my connection with these people. Yes. I love them. I love them with all my heart, every one of them. And they know it. They feel it. I mean, you have the same gift. You have the same authenticity. And when we see you on Instagram stories and we hear you on your podcast and we see you on all of the places and we're going to read your book and all that, we know we're getting Jenna. Mm -hmm. And that's the thing that is so special. And the thing that I tell every young entrepreneur who comes to me and says, Mally, I want to start something. I want it to have longevity. And I say to them the same thing every time you have to give them you. Mm. You have to give them your heart. And, and look, there are days when it hurts and there's days when you don't want to. When the pandemic hit, a lot of people kind of went into hiding and kind of hid and got, you know, freaked out. I literally, Jenna, jumped in both feet first. I mean, I was on that Instagram girl. I was like, people are going to get sick of my face. But I was on there every single day reminding them that this is not, this is not forever, guys. We're going to keep on growing. We're going to stick together. We're going to hold each other up. And you know what? Maybe, you know, no one's seeing you now, or maybe you're wearing a mask or whatever, but I'm going to keep showing you how to make your lips look like you got lip injections. I'm going to keep showing you how to look like you lost five pounds because trust me, you're going to need it because we're going about to eat all the food in this house. <laughs> <laughs> and we just kept, I just kept it. I kept it strong because I knew at the end of the day, this is something, another thing I tell entrepreneurs, you have to believe in your heart, even if it's scary. And even if you don't know that you will not fail, mm -hmm. you have to just mm -hmm. keep on believing. And even if things look like they are going so south that they could never turn, you just have to never stop believing. And that's just something I've always done in these 17 years, even in our darkest moments, I knew that I was never going to give up. Hmm. With customer expectations at an all-time high, showing customer appreciation is more important than ever. From special discounts to customer gifts, there are a million ways to show customer love. But the one way you will always win is showing them you value their time. From the moment they engage, make things easy, like food delivered to your door without leaving the couch easy. HubSpot's intuitive payment tools are just one of the ways that you can help your customers have a painless purchase experience. With full access to payment data, your team gets the full customer story, meaning they can provide the best possible service. And with directly embedded payment links, your customers can seamlessly purchase and pay from emails, live chats, and more. Learn more about how HubSpot can help your business grow better at HubSpot.com. How many times have you thought to yourself, I should start a podcast? Maybe you've got a voice backed by passion, a knack for storytelling, a penchant for entertaining, a gift for listening and asking those really good questions. No matter what your specialty is, there's a reason you're feeling pulled to the podcast space. So listen to those words. That's the universe maybe telling you something. You should start a podcast. Lean in and make a move. It's time to hit record and host your own show. I can help you craft one from scratch. Snag my totally free guide for podcasting beginners at jennacutcher.com slash start a podcast. That's jennacutcher.com slash start a podcast for my beginner podcasting guide. What has it been like? You know, I think what's beautiful is that you know, you shared, you turned 50 and, and it didn't feel like you thought it should, whatever that means. My grandma and grandpa are always like, you're only as old as you feel. <laughs> but I do think that, you know, a lot of people that listen to the show, even myself, like I just hit a decade in entrepreneurship, which is yes. a long time, yeah. but I think yeah. it's so important that we take on mentors who have been through even more than us, who have experienced more than us, who have, you know, like had more experience in life. And one thing that I think is so important for us to take on these mentors is to ask them the questions that we have not experienced in our lifetime yet. And I just want to know, you know, when you share about like, you know, it's just, it's you and, and people get the real you. 
How has your business evolved as you've gained more life experience, as you've evolved? You know, you became a mother during your entrepreneurial journey. You have moved states. You know, you've done a lot of things. So how has your business been able to evolve as you've evolved and grown as a human being? Uh, Yeah, well, it's funny. I think the thing that has changed so much is it's about, for me, making it easy for everyone to look and feel beautiful and powerful with a million things going on. Mm -hmm. Now, you know, when I, you know, first started conceptualizing Mally Beauty, I I was in my 20s. You know, I didn't have kids. I didn't have, you know, this crazy lifestyle. I wasn't going a million miles an hour. There wasn't like, you know, a worldwide pandemic. Right. And I literally create the products that I do for what I'm looking at in the moment. Mm -hmm. So a couple of things have changed when number one, for example, we just launched a line of skin products, foundation and concealer, and it's called stressless. Mm -hmm. And the truth of the matter is those two products were created during the pandemic in my Mm -hmm. kitchen, in my blender. I was sitting there after, you know, whatever, being on lockdown for for months, I looked in the mirror and girl, my skin was tired. I looked crazy. I didn't feel like myself. I didn't feel like I was, you know, a hundred percent. I'm very energetic. I didn't look or feel like that anymore. I got in, I dug in and I created a product that I wanted to make me feel alive and stressless foundation and concealer were born. That is really what I have always done with Mally Beauty. She has grown with me mm-hmm. as a mother and a human and, you know, as, a, as someone who wants to look and feel their best. You know, that's something that's really important to me. It's always been about my celebrity tips and tricks, but it really is also about making it fast and easy. So we have a product called the shadow stick, which literally is your like your primer, your eyeshadow, your eyeliner, and your brushes all in one. And I, I apologize. I know I sound like I'm selling it. I'm not. No, it really is. It is because these products come from me. They come from, mm-hmm. they birth them from my vagina, I feel like, right? Because they are literally something that I need. There's yeah. something that I need and that I know my girlfriends need. So turning 50 and changing. And I really feel like the brand is changing with me. And she always kind of has. Mm -hmm. Another thing that I've learned and has made a difference. And I think this helps not only in life and, but also in, you know, when you're an entrepreneur is when I turned 50, it was funny. Everyone was like, oh, does it feel different? different? Like, what is it? You know, whatever. And ironically, physically, it doesn't feel different. I try to take care of myself probably drink too much caffeine. Sure. Of course I skip my yoga sometimes, but overall I try to take good care of my, my body. The thing that changed almost overnight for me, Jenna, that it almost scared me was the fact that I no longer give a crap Mm. about what other people think. Now I know that that sounds so cliche and you're like, Oh my God, you sound like, you know, whatever, one of those you know, silly posts that I actually post on my Instagram all the time. (laughs) But but it was true, Jenna, for the first time ever, I finally saw that thing. You know, you have that aunt. Do you have that aunt? I don't know if you do. They literally don't care. Yes. Do anything. Yes. Yes. And they will say it and they will, and they don't care. We all have that. (laughs) (laughs) I was like, oh my gosh, I'm becoming that aunt. Like all of a sudden I was like, you know what? I, I realized that I'm on the other side. If I have the grace to live to a hundred, I'm officially halfway. That's right. And I got a lot of other stuff I need to do. And I'm so tired of pleasing other people and sacrificing my spirit and my heart and my money, right? Mm -hmm. And my time to make you feel good. Yeah. And that's why, you know, that's something that I learned. That's something like, offline, I might ask you some advice about. Oh, I'm here. I feel like you're good at that. Yeah. I mean, you have to get to a point to where you're building, especially to in this industry. And, and I can only imagine it's even heightened being in the beauty industry, but you have to get to a point where you can just literally show up because 
life is, you know, life is chaotic and beautiful and all these things. But I think too, there becomes this point when you realize like you are so much more than your brand. Yes. And I think that that's a really pivotal thing because it's like, we become known for our brands and, and it's beautiful. And I think it's, it's really cool that we can create careers where we get to be ourselves, but Mm -hmm. The flip mm-hmm. side of that is like, we are more than our output. We are more than our brand. We are more yes. than that yes. appearance. And I think that yes. that's beautiful that you are stepping into that even more because I think that's such a reminder for all of us. And one thing that I love, and you know what, Mal, you were the reason why I even found out about this is mm-hmm. you tagged me in a post about the success 125. <laughs> And I literally just thought like I was getting invited to celebrate you. So I was like, yeah, Melly, this is amazing. And then I was like, oh, wait, why did she tag me? And I, I all of a sudden like pull up the page and I'm like, oh my goodness, I, my face is right next to you. And I love that. And, and what I want to know as the follow-up question to this is what is your definition of success today? Because I'm imagining as your business has evolved, as you have changed and your brand has changed with you so has your definition of success. Mm -hmm. So what is success for Mally right now? Success for Mally right now is getting enough sleep. Mm -hmm. Okay. Here, this was another aha moment I just had. I got to be honest with you. I used to be that person. I was that person that if I could brag and I'm doing the finger quotes, right? about having four hours of sleep and still being able to work until I, my mm-hmm. fingers were bleeding, right? Mm-hmm. And, oh, and I fed the kids healthy food. Oh, and I sold, you know, uh, I sold an hour on QVC and I did this and I made it mm-hmm. to New York and I did the Rachel Ratio and I did it on four hours of sleep. What? Like I used to be so proud of that. Yeah. I used to be so like, that was a badge of honor for me. And now I realize that sleep is health. Mm -hmm. And again, maybe it is getting older. I don't give a duty. You know what? Getting eight hours of sleep is not a luxury. It is, it is taking care of myself. As I speak to the mother of a newborn, I apologize. Hey, no, no, no. (laughs) We're, we're in the same camp though. Like I literally told my team yesterday, I was like, I am in this season of like very much prioritizing health because that is the only thing that can keep everything else running, including my family. And you know, it, I no, So don't apologize because I love sleep and (laughs) we're working on it. And it it is though, it, it's funny when you, do get this opportunity to hit the brakes and look at it and be like, that was a badge of honor for so long when really it was me just putting everything else above myself and my health. It's crazy, right? Yes, it is crazy. And I did it my whole career and I like, and I, and I bragged about it and I put it on Instagram and I would like, be like, look, look at me. I'm successful. I don't sleep. Well, yeah. That has changed. Yeah. And so so success to me is taking care of my body, making sure that at this point, our twins, Sophie and Pilar are now 15 and Vivian's 12, which is like, girl, all I got to tell you, don't blink. And I know it's so cliche. I hate No, that it's feeling, true. It's but, true. And I love watching you because I see you embracing every single moment. I see you holding on to those moments with those babies. I'll tell you. I remember, I will say one thing, and this is not answering your question, but I just want to tell you a quick story. So, because I know you do this, but it's very important. It was very important for me as a new mother. So long story short, we had launched Mally Beauty. I was, it was on fire. We were working, we were getting ready to like basically, you know, get on the rocket ship and we were going to be working hard. And I got pregnant with the twins. And I was at QVC and I had the big belly and I was walking around, I still had my heels on and all my makeup and my things. And this wonderful, wonderful entrepreneur, very successful entrepreneur, she came up to me and she put her hand on my belly and she said, listen to me. She's like, look me in the eyes. And I said, okay. And she said, this is about to take off for you. You have every opportunity right now to Basically, have anything you want. She said, listen to my words. I missed every single Mm -hmm. soccer game. I missed every single first step. Mm -hmm. I wasn't there when his first tooth fell out. I missed every moment that I can never get back. 
Sure, I have a successful business. Sure, I have money. But what I don't have are those memories. Mm -hmm. She said, don't miss a thing. <laughs> and I looked at her. Of course, I was sobbing. Yeah. Right? Like, oh, yeah. <laughs> Hormones. <laughs> exactly. Oh, yeah. But you know what? I, I listened. Yeah. And I didn't. I yeah. have to say, by the grace of God, I've been here for everything. Even with this crazy, everything is gone. Maybe Mally Beauty could have been even more successful if I didn't. But I chose being a mom. Yeah. I chose being there and raising those girls yeah. with my husband. So that to me is success. Feeling good about, you know, the products that I create and how I present them. That to me feels like success. Obviously having a great sellout feels like success, mm -hmm. but really at the end of the day, being proud of the human yeah. that I am and living ethically and with integrity and being honest and true and making, you know, great friendships and, and laughing a lot along mm -hmm. the way. That's if you beautiful. don't laugh till you pee a little bit every <laughs> time. <laughs> You're not living. <laughs> oh, that's so beautiful though. And it, you know, I think it's such a beautiful thing because I do feel like my generation is a little bit more awake to yeah. what that woman said to you. Yes. And I feel like we are a little bit, and maybe, maybe not, maybe I'm just projecting my own you know, what I believe, but I like am enjoying this season where I'm like, I can pump the brakes for the next five years yeah. and know where the gas pedal is. And I trust myself to remember where that gas pedal is when it's ready to go. And who even knows if I want to go, you know, but it is, I think that for so long, women were like, don't take your foot off the gas. Like, mm -hmm. don't do it. Like you got your big break or you got your lucky moment or you met that right person. And this is your one opportunity. And I think my goal is to like help women trust themselves that like what got you this far will get you further when you're yes. ready. It's okay That's to pause. And I think that we never really had that permission, you know, yeah. unless somebody like that woman gave it to you. That's right. You probably would have believed that like that momentum had to carry you forward, not the gifts that got you there. You got it, girl. And that's the thing I'll tell you, especially as women in business, we are not given as many opportunities. Mm -hmm. We're just not. You know, mm -hmm. there's not that many, you know, we all know that, you know, it's funny. It was just International Women's Day. I don't know when this will air, but it was just, just International Women's Day. And we filmed a video with two of our daughters. And one of our girls said to me, Mommy, has there ever, you know, been moments where you and Daddy were in a business meeting in the room and Daddy, you know, was respected and you were not? <laughs> And I was like, a million how times. Many, <laughs> how many fingers you got? Okay. Yeah. And that's the thing that I love about being a mother of girls. Mm -hmm. And I love seeing you with your girls. And mm -hmm. and listen, you are also blessed to have a husband that loves you and, and will support you and carry around that baby with no mm -hmm. shirt on. Okay. <laughs> telling my husband, I was like, this is, they're just like us. And that's oh. the thing that I love is having that support and that, that love. But, but to the point of showing these young women, these young ladies, these young powerhouse badasses that they can choose, that we are trying to move mountains for them even more than the ones who have gone ahead of us have done so that they can have these opportunities, so that they can make the choices, so that they do have the same opportunities as the men that have gone before them. One of the big, you know, we both love Lisa Bilyeu, as yes. you know. And I, the minute our girls got Instagram, I followed her on their account immediately mm -hmm. because her badassery, the way yeah. she shows up so unapologetically to be who she is. Now, you know, you and I both do that as well, but you know, she has that kind oh, of, she has that grit. <laughs> my mom, we went on a trip recently. My mom was like, tell me what Lisa is like. And I was like, she is exactly <laughs> what you would think she is and more in the and best more. way. It's amazing. I Yes. And, and they really, I love it. You know, and I've told her, I said, I know you, you know, there's a book, there's a, this, I said, you, you have to speak to that generation mm -hmm. Amen. because 
right? They really relate to how strong you are, yeah. you know, and, and that's something that I, you know, I hope, you know, that we can all do is again, continue to pave the way for, for young female entrepreneurs and men, of course, as well. And, yes. you know, that's a whole other world and don't get me started on the LGBTQ plus, you know, community, because that's where my heart is as well, yeah. you know, but I just think there's room for everybody. There's yeah. room for everybody to be great. And and I think you do that so well, Jenna. I, I watch you and how you love and support so many other women. And I just, it's inspiring, honestly. Mm. Thank you, Mally. Mally, where can everybody find you and connect with you and learn more about you and Mally Beauty and everything that you create <laughs> and all of the funny things you share too. I love, it. I just love your humor. Where can we all find you? So I'm on Instagram, almost an embarrassing amount. It's funny. I was listening to your, I was listening to your podcast and you're like, you know, you, we were, you were talking about Instagram and I was like kind of covering my eyes a little bit. It's like, Kate, hey, don't do that. But I'm going to listen to Jenna. Everybody listen to Jenna. I'm on Instagram at Mally Roncal a lot. We also have, you know, Mally Beauty. I have another little love side hustle called Positivity Preacher, which is just a little love page that Phil and I do. And we just try to, you know, lift people up. We know life is hard and we've been through a lot together. I'm 50, he's 60. We're both wild and crazy. And we try to just give a little bit of love whenever we can. And of course, Mally Beauty, Mally.com. I'm on QVC, which is like my home that I love so much. Again, after 17 years, that is really my second home. And I'm just so proud and honored. And I love, love, love being there. So you can always go to QVC.com and see what Mally Beauty's got cooking. Yeah. So that's kind of my, that's my day. And then that's me and my eight hours of sleep. <laughs> yes. Amen. Oh, Mally, thank you so much for coming on the show. I am so grateful that we finally got to have this conversation yes. and I'm just so inspired by you. Oh my gosh. Right back at you, mama. And always hugging you, loving you, watching you from afar. But yes, I manifest that one day we'll be in the same room and yes. I can give you a big old hug. Oh man, I just love Mally and her energy and her spirit. And she is truly a woman that champions other women in such a beautiful and encouraging and hilarious way. I hope that you love hearing these conversations with all different entrepreneurs and women who are dreaming up bigger and brighter and better futures for the next generation. And I am just so honored to be able to sit here and interview such incredible humans like Mally for this show. So thank you, my sweet listener, for tuning in. Thank you, Mally, for coming on the show. And of course, until next time, gold diggers, keep on digging your biggest goals. And let's all pray that we feel and look and sound as happy and good as Mally does when we turn 50, 60, 70, 80, or beyond. I'm over here giving you a virtual high five because you just finished another episode of the Gold Digger podcast. Did that go by way too fast for anyone else? If you want more, head over to golddiggerpodcast.com for show notes and all the discount codes from today's sponsors. And if you're looking for a new crew of movers and shakers like you to bounce ideas and ask questions, be sure to join my exclusive community for gold diggers on Facebook. The link's waiting for you at golddiggerpodcast.com. 